Welcome to TV show Why Religion. So I'm pleased to welcome David Case with me on the show today. He is my longtime friend. Also, he just newly published his book. I'm so excited. Could you tell us more about yourself? Thank you. Cindy, it's good to see you again. We met about 11 or 12 years ago when you were a new neighbor. <laughs> because I consider it to be a deeply spiritual painting of Jesus as she depicts dying over a broken world to bring it healing. And um, someone asked her, her husband uh, came from a Jewish heritage, she came from a Muslim heritage, and so in the art exhibit someone asked, you paint a picture of Jesus on the cross, are you a Christian? Your husband is Jewish, are you Jewish? Your parents are Muslim, are you Muslim? And she stood there and she says, I don't know. All I know is that I love Jesus. And I said, you know, I think that's enough. Mm, that's also my question. All the religions can lead to the God, to the people. Why so many religions? Well, I think uh, all world. religions are an expression of a human heart that has questions. Mm -hmm. And all humanity has the same questions. How do I deal with suffering? How do I deal with shame? What do I do with my guilt? And I think all religions are an attempt to attempt to ask, answer some of those questions. As a Christian believer, I believe that religion is man's attempt to reach up higher than himself, but that Christianity is different in that at Christmas we celebrate God reaching down to us in the birth of Jesus. And that's a connection that works. Mankind always in his best attempts, no matter how devout, always even within himself wonders, have I done enough? Mm. Have I have I made it? And the message in the Bible is that God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him would not perish, but would have everlasting life. And so I would say that Christianity is different. It's very religious, and around the world it manifests itself in many different ways. But it's different in that it's God's intent to have a relationship with you and with me not just our attempt to impress God with our righteousness, which really doesn't work. Mm -hmm. um, to think about how can I honor that person by being careful with the story they've told me. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's okay to share. Sometimes it's okay to share with a name. Sometimes you shouldn't use the name mm -hmm. to honor and respect that person. So most of the stories are true stories? All of these stories are true. Okay, so how, for example, you talk about the Afghanistan stories, what the story to cut your attention, keep you memorize that? Well, the funny part about that, that's chapter one, is this gentleman, gentleman who was an intermediate English student of mine who had been a general in the Afghan army. And mm. everybody that was anybody in Afghanistan knew this general. He had served so successfully and so long. Mm -hmm. And when he came here, he sat in my intermediate English class, surrounded by a group of Asian women. He was the only male student. <laughs> and my icebreaker for the day was, when you retire, what would you want to do? And the women said, flower arranging, painting, traveling, spend time with grandchildren. And, um, and, and this general just sat very straight, almost not even open his eyes, until it came to him. And I thought, has the general fallen asleep? And I said, what about you, general? And he went like this, and he said, when I retire, I want to marry an American blonde woman and have lots of children. How <laughs> many women? <laughs> and his student, his Did wife, his wife, one? his wife was one of our students. Oh, okay. But all of these Asian women just like, how dare you say that? Right, right. <laughs> but he was teasing them. Oh, okay. And I thought, this this powerful man in his country has has seen battle and war and death and destruction, but he hasn't. So how do you think? How do you see uh, the becoming Christianity, uh, believing Christianity in China? becoming bigger or larger. So. Well, I think that's one of the unwritten stories. It would be nice to see the Washington Post or some of the local news outlets tell that story. Because after the 
cultural after the after the communist revolution in 1949 mm -hmm. all of the western bible teachers doctors medical personnel mm -hmm. educators who were christian were asked to leave mm -hmm. and what remained were their students their followers who had come to believe in jesus and in the absence of western leadership this group of faithful believers studied learned shared and grew and grew and grew mm -hmm. and today china is probably getting very very close to being the most christianized country in the world just in terms of sheer numbers of people who say i believe in jesus i follow his teachings and it's getting close to about 10 percent according conservative records and research based in hong kong and other countries and even their chinese religious affairs bureau admits that there are tens of millions of Christians in China. And the thing that's wonderful is that these Christians are not anti-political. Mm -hmm. In fact, they pray for their country. They pray for their leaders. And they are good leaders in the industry, in education, in business. And they are showing their own nation how to do life well. Not rich, necessarily, but how to do life well. If I just the, the, this question, just want to ask you: If you were the missionary to China, what do you do? So I mean, from the history I learned, if you go to the different country, do you have to adjust or emerge with the culture? That's a great in question. Locally, you know, one of the early, early missionaries, Christian missionaries to China, uh, was a man by the name of Hudson Taylor, and he did learn the language, and more than that. He dressed the part. He wore a ponytail. Oh. He loved the people that much. Oh, it's like a Chinese. Wow. So if you are a missionary, I look forward to answers next time. And thank you for coming and jo joining us. Thank you so much.